I'm doing great. We were we were going to say that there was a lot going on in Washington, yes, right. so let's hear about it straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> and affectionately, we say the Congressman Jack. And I'm the horse to ride. Okay. And you're not riding your, you're not riding your bike from Savannah to Washington D.C. Right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I could bike. do that. It might take several months <laughs> to get there. It's a long commute that way. Yeah. Welcome. Actually, you you would appreciate this. We have a flag football team in which we um, get pro players. We had Ken Harvey from the Washington Redskins. Herschel Walker, you might know that name, um, John Booty from Philadelphia, and of course Heath Shuler, who's a member of Congress, and John Runyon. So we, we play the police and we raise money for the children of fallen police officers. So um, we're playing a little flag football up there. In the morning, it's bipartisan, it's not on the clock, it's, it's, uh, it starts at 7 a.m. Who are the officials? That's the, that's the important question. <laughs> I was wondering when a politician drops names, who you, so you that's drop right. uh, athletes' names. Well, well see what was happening is the police were beating us, and so what do we do? We're, we're lawmakers, that's rule right. makers, so we changed the, the rules, rules to say that we could have pros. So we right. put in some pros, and they still beat us. But uh, You've been recruiting for years up there, J.C. Watts, Steve Large at these That's guys. right. Come it, it, you know, it really is funny. If you see somebody in either party who's a, a former athlete, they can play baseball or football, you immediately start saying, okay, we've got to get this guy in. How do we have How are we going to do that? That might be where the problem is That's with the country and policy. I don't know. <laughs> Last time I saw Jack was uh, on North Campus up in Athens the morning of the Georgia-South Carolina game. That one worked out pretty well for you, didn't it? It, it really yeah. did. It was good luck. I'm tailgating. We only have you for a few minutes, and there is so much going on. And right when you walked in the door, you know, you were hit with what, what was on the monitors right. coming out of Washington, D.C., uh, apparently a shooter on the loose. Yes, and, and I think that what you want to do when something like that happens, and in this case it's the Navy Yard, which is somewhat of a quasi-secured area, you want to find out, is this a, a lone gunman? Is there a problem, an emotional problem, or is this part of a bigger network? Um, and if, would it be an international network? Because these, this day and age, with what's going on overseas and so close to 9-11 and um, possible strikes against Syria, anything's possible. And so you, so you tend to uh, really uh, swoop in real quickly and say, okay, what do we have to do to contain We were this? watching the live feeds. I don't know if we can uh, pull one of those up right now. We don't, uh, we don't have it right now with the helicopters, of course, flying over and everything. And um, they, they said it's the home of the chief of naval operations. There's a lot, I think it's 25 percent of the Navy's budget is spent there in terms of ship construction and so forth, yeah. over 3,000 employees. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, and we're still finding out information about yeah. this and we'll be yes. obviously Good monitoring this throughout the day. All right, so where else would you like to start? Um, maybe you want to start with Syria? Yes. Okay. Uh, things have changed just in the last week very dramatically. Are things progressing in a way that you think is going to work? Uh, I, I don't know if it will work. It's hard to trust the Russians. Um, you know, will we know really where these weapons are? Will, will we get a good inventory of these weapons? Um, and since Assad and Putin are lined up as allies, you, you, have to, you have to make sure you get the third parties in there to look at this stuff. But I think it was a better step than striking. My concern with us, us taking a, a strike is that um, it's a civil war contained within the boundary of Syria. And uh, if we enter it, would there be spillover to other countries? Would there be collateral damage? And because um, since we didn't strike immediately after they crossed the red lines, then what happens is the Assad re regime puts civilians in front of the chemical weapons or the potential strike areas, and really hard to do a surgical strike after you've announced you're going to do it. You got to do it quickly. They've got a, a quick deadline though on um, on releasing where those w uh, weapons are. Do we leave that on the table though? The possibility of a strike. I, I think you have to leave it on the table. I, I would think this time though that, that if the president does make that decision, makes a statement about it, that it's just a quick right. follow through. I mean, it's not unusual for a president to strike a country and then tell Congress yeah, about it. Bush did it in Somalia. Reagan did it in. Um, Libya, Reagan did it in Granada, um, so yeah. it, it's not, and uh, Clinton did it in Kosovo. Right. That, that situation changed pretty quickly. Uh, how much do you think public opinion influenced the president's decision? He originally say it came out and said he was going to, to strike, and then he kind of backed up a little bit. I, I think that um, the public was overwhelmingly against it. Um, I've never seen such. In, in, in our office, and I think most offices, it was about 98% of the phone calls were opposed to it. 
And so I, I don't think, you know, if you look at Iraq, Afghanistan, the Arab Spring, uh, look at Libya, we haven't had a lot of success. We haven't finished anything up in a neat package. And so the American people are, are a little bit leery of it. And, and I believe that um, that was the, the voice from California to Georgia to New York, sure. don't do this. You're telling us that our, our time is wrapping up already, but we have to know about the economy. Uh, deadlines coming up here. What's going to happen the first of, of October? What about the debt ceiling? Uh, well, you know, we're going to have the debt ceiling debate, and we're going to have lots of issues that are tied into that, like a farm bill, possibly immigration, uh, what to do with sequestration. Um, what, what you need to do is make sure that we're not cutting out the muscle with the fat, and unfortunately, that's what sequestration does. And so I'm hopeful that we can come up with some better uh, spending reductions that are fair and across the board, and they make sense to everyone. Are we headed for a shutdown? I don't think we'll have a shutdown. That possibility is there, but um, I think most people do not want a shutdown. What is the deadline on that? 10-1, uh, uh, October 1st, okay, October is the fiscal year, but we are going to probably pass a continuing resolution uh, so that we can negotiate a little bit longer. Unless, unless we start tying the debt ceiling in with and, other issues. Yeah, if the debt ceiling gets tied into Obamacare, and there are those who want to do that, I think that's going to make it more difficult. I think that Obamacare could be part of the discussion on sequestration and possibly saying something like the president the pres has exempted large businesses from the mandate on Obamacare. I think it's fair, if that's the case, to exempt small businesses and individuals. And I think there's a real discussion there that both sides could come together on. And uh, Vice President Joe Biden is going to be at the ports today. I'm guessing you're going to be at the ports today. I, I am. I, I certainly welcome the Vice President here. It's very important. It's significant that right. he's coming. Um, very frustrated. After 13 years yeah. of study, we need to be digging because the Panama Canal is not waiting on Savannah, Georgia. So ho hopefully his signal today is that it's going to be in the president's budget. We will be at the ports with you and we'll have a lot more from you and from the vice president and what's going on out there on the news this afternoon and this evening. Thank you so much for stopping thanks. in. Thanks. We had a lot more yeah. time. Thanks, we a, do this all thanks a lot. Appreciate we'll it. look forward to seeing you guys.